All right, everybody, that missed a cut on Derm Day. Here's your video. <laughs> in class, we always go into things a little bit more in depth and maybe take a little bit different angles to them. But hopefully in this video, you get a sense of what we covered. Echinoderm day. Remember what an echinoderm is. They don't move by two feet. They move by tube feet. Tube feet. When am I talking about tube feet? I'm talking about these things. Underneath an echinoderm or on the echinoderm are all these little suction cup tubes right here. Oh, in the tank, uh, in class, I reached in, I got our starfish out of the tank and showed. We went around, we saw all of these little suction cup tubes were kind of moving around. More on that in a little bit later. All right, general echinoderm notes. First of all, we gotta give some examples. Yeah, you know, we should say sea stars. And we shouldn't say starfish because they're not a fish. But I'm fine with that. Here we go, we got some examples. Uh, I'll go sea stars. A sea star, let's see, what else, what else? What else? Oh, 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 uh, next one, sea cucumber. Sea cucumber. Ah, what else? What else? No, I'm a sea urchin. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Sea urchin. And then, oh, sand dollars. Here we go. Now, what else are we going to talk about for general? Making babies. Remember, that's the goal in life is make babies. And how the, how the sea star is going to make babies. I mean, what do you think? Do you have any guesses? I mean, do you think they can do fishing and just rip themselves apart? <laughs> do you think they get together? <clears throat> I got you. Broadcast spawning. They just do broadcast spawning. Yeah, that came up again in class. And, uh, try to summarize again a little bit later in the video. All right, let's dive into it. First thing, oh, we got sea stars. I mean, what do you think these things eat? Oh, in class, we went in and around, we had some ideas, and then finally I told, they eat these. They love to eat bivalves. Oh, man. Question is, is how? How does a sea star eat a bivalve? I mean, because, oh, ah, I see something there. And then, how does it eat it? Like, this is a hard shell. And, 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 and the bivalve had that adductor muscle. I can't even open it. So how's the sea star eat it? Oh, in class, people guess, maybe they have a radula. And, and I held up this, and in, in the tank, it's all filled up with these. And these are clams that were eaten by that sea star that's in the tank. So I don't know, what do you think? How did it eat it? It doesn't look like it has any holes. It doesn't look like the shell is crushed at all. So, how? Finally, we got to it. What the sea star is going to do is it's going to go on top of the bivalve. And with its suction cup tube feet, it's going to try to open it up. But the bivalve is going to flex its muscles, its abductor muscle, and it's going to keep the shell closed. But the sea star is going to try for like four hours. And after four hours, the abductor muscle, it gets a little bit tired. Oh, oh. And it just opens up a little bit. This is what the sea star's been waiting for. Because now, out of this hole, it throws up its stomach. And its stomach goes out of its body and it goes around the clam inside the clam shell. And then the stomach starts making stomach acid. It liquefies the clam inside its own shell. And then it just sucks it up and this is what you got. So what does it eat? It eats bivalves. How does it eat it? That method is called stomach extrusion. And that's a stomach extrusion. Oh. In class, we paused right now, and uh, we started watching uh, this video right here. So click on that link and watch that video. Next on our notes, they have blank at the end of each arm. At the end of each arm, 
they have an I spot. An I spot is different from an I. An I spot could just see light, whereas an I could see shape. So they have an I spot on the end of each arm. Next bullet, can, yep. You could say regrow or regenerate lost limbs. And we looked at the uh, progress of Nubby. It's grown pretty good. Here we go. We got reproduction. Uh, reproduce, uh, broadcast spawn. All right. Then what we did is uh, we went through a couple of uh, sea stars. Like, there's this one right here. It's called the mottled sea star. And we compared it to this one right here, the purple sea star. I mean, this is the mottled sea star. And this is the purple sea star. Well, first of all, they come in all different colors. Like the mottled sea star, it comes in purple, it comes in blue, it comes in orange, it comes in gray. And the purple sea star, it comes in purple, it comes in orange, it comes in blue, it comes in gray. But what we gotta do is come up with some differences between them. The first thing we saw, yeah, is the arms. The mottled sea star has like, skinny arms and the purple sea star it's got thick arms so that was the first bullets that we wrote down for the mottled and purple sea star and then there's even another difference and the other difference starts off with the purple sea star it has this right here in the middle it has a pentagon in the middle and the purple uh the mottled sea star has no pentagon so a pentagon means it's a purple. No pentagon means a model. There we go. Then we talk about the sunflower star. I mean, we talk about the sunflower star. What's up with the sunflower star? Yeah, it does. It has 24 arms. First bullet. How big is the sunflower sea star? Oh, it can be. Uh-huh, it does. Uh-huh, it can. It can get three feet across. Oh my God, 24 arms, three feet across. And if it moves by tube feet, that's a whole lot of tube feet. These things can really move. I mean, they move really, really fast. I mean, they haul. So now what we, oh, uh, then what we did in class, and there's three bullets for the sunflower star. We, we didn't do the third bullet. You know, there's a lot of sea stars. It's just like there's a lot of clams, and a lot of bivalves, uh, other bivalves, and a lot of ga gastropods. Here's some other sea stars that are in the Puget Sound. Like, there's this one right here. There's this one right here. And it's called a bat star. It's called a bat star because it has five webbed arms. Oh, there's this one here, it's called the Leather Star. Ah, uh, the Leather Star, you know how sea stars feel like rough and bumpy? Not the Leather Star, it feels like leather. Oh, if you ever get a chance, do it. Smell it, it smells like garlic. There's this other one, it's called the Pacific Blood Star. It's called the Pacific Blood Star because it's a deep, rich red. I haven't seen a blood star in the Puget Sound, but if you go up by like Port Angeles or like Nia Bay, there's a lot of blood stars that are up there. Then there's this one right here. It's called the Daisy Brittle Star. Oh, I have seen this at Golden Gardens. The Daisy Brittle Star. Ah, this area right here is the size of a pencil eraser. And the arms, the arms are the size of a pencil. Brittle. It's called the Brittle Star. At Golden Gardens, I found one of these and I had it in my hand. And while I was holding it in my hand, its legs just started to break off. It's its defense mechanism. See, if it breaks off its legs, then maybe the predator goes, oh, I'll just eat those and leave the body all alone. And then it'll regenerate its lost limbs. In class, what we did right now is we watched, uh, we watched this video right here. So go ahead and watch that video and you'll see all these uh, Daisy Brittle stars and you'll see the sunflower star. I'm going to pause it.